Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video of the Python Fundamental Series. As you have probably realized at this point, data is what forms the foundation of programming. And while the primitive data types had been more than enough for us in the previous chapters, more complex tasks would need more complicated data types. So in chapter four of this course, you will be introduced to three new data types that will empower you throughout the rest of your programming journey. They will be lists, tuples, and dictionaries. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on lists and tuples, and in the next one, we will be talking about dictionaries. Let's get started. The lesson today is going to be an introduction to array data structures. And since we'll be introducing new data types, it's worthwhile to look back and think about the data types that we've learned so far. Most of the data types we've discussed so far has only been able to hold one value. For example, an int holds one integer, a float holds one floating point number, and a boolean holds one value of either true or false. The only exception is a string data type. A string is an array of characters, and it can contain as many and as few characters as we want. The data types that we will discuss in this lesson are quite similar to a string, since they all hold a collection of values as one. The data types we will look at today are the list and tuple data types, both of which are used to store multiple items in one collection. Firstly, we're going to talk about the list data type. A list is an ordered and mutable, meaning it can be changed, data type that contains elements. In Python, lists are denoted as being enclosed within square brackets, so like that. The items of a list are separated by commas. And here are some examples. Here we can see list of students is a list of the same data type. They're all strings. So this is going to be the list of items in list of students. And you can see firstly, we have a square bracket and we have the items and the comma. The space here is optional just to make it look formatted better. And here's another element, a comma, etc. And at the end, there is a closing square bracket. If I print out the items of list of students and the type of this list, we'll see the items of the list printed out as well as class list, meaning this is a list data type. And here is a list that stores different data types. List of random items is going to store string, int, boolean, string, int, and another boolean. And if I print this out, you'll see it's printed out just as it was printed out before. So now we're going to talk about list length. Just like with strings, we can use the len, the len function, to get the length of a list. So here in this cell, we've defined a list storing seven elements, all of which are programming languages names. And if I print out the length of the programming languages, you'll see seven printed out onto the screen. And also like strings, there are many similarities between lists and strings. We can use indexing to access the items within the list. The first item has index zero, the second one has index one, and so on. The last item of a list has index negative one. We can access a list item of a list called list at index n using the syntax of list, which is the name of the list, and then a square bracket, and an n, which is the index we want to access, and a closing bracket right here. So here, if you look back at the programming languages list that we defined here, programming languages at index 2 is going to be 0, 1, 2. So it's going to print out Python here. And at index negative 6, let's count backwards, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. So it's going to print out Python and C++. Running this cell, you'll see that reflected in the output. If we try to access list items at indexes, at indices that does not exist, then Python will raise an index error. So here's a list that stores a total of five items. And if we try to access the element at index five, so the sixth element, you'll see an index error being raised. 
it tells us list index out of range. The next step is the list slicing. Also like with strings, we can slice a list, which allows us to access the sublist of multiple items. So here's a people list storing person one, two, three, all the way up to seven. And group one is going to be people and it's going to use this syntax, which has a opening bracket and a number and a colon and a, another number here and a closing bracket. If we do not put a number before the colon or afterwards, if we don't put it before the colon, it's assumed to be zero. And if we don't put it after the colon, it's assumed to contain all the elements after the first in the, after the first number. So running this cell, you'll see group one has the elements of person one, two, and three, because this is going to be the start of the list and all the way up to and not including three, index three. So index zero, one, and two. So it won't contain person four, which is at index three. Three to five is going to store the elements at index three and four. It won't contain the element at index five because it stops before then. And this, which is a five colon and nothing here, is going to give us person six and person seven because this is index five and this is just all the way to the end of the list. Note the use of the str function here. Because group one, group two, and group three, those are all lists, we can't concatenate it to a string here. So we have to use the str function to make group one into a string in order to combine it with a string. And the same story with the other two groups down here. Now let's talk about modifying lists. Unlike some other data types that we'll talk about in just a moment, lists are mutable, which means that it can be, con it can be modified. And here's an example of that in action. Taking a look back at the people list that we made up here, if we try to access the item at index two, which is person three, and if we try to make it new person three, you'll see person one, two, and then new person three. And so the way we do it is we access the item using uh, indexing and then using the assignment operator, also known as the equal sign, and then the new value we want the item to hold. And we can also use slicing to assign, to assign multiple values to a list. So here, index indices four and five are going to hold the values of new person five and new person six. So let's print that out and you'll see new person three is here as well and new person five and new person six are modified. Now the dot pop method. The pop method removes the element of a list at the index passed in and it defaults to negative one. So we don't have to pass any number in if we just want to remove the last item. And the element that is removed is returned from the method call. So let's print out the output first. We'll see that this is the list that was modified above. And here we have firstly removed the last item, which is person seven. And you'll see person one through six printed out. So seven is removed. And then after that, here we removed person two, which is at index one. And you can see it's one, three. So person two is disappeared. And after that, we have removed new person three, which you can see now between person four and five, or between uh, one and four, you can see person three has disappeared as well. Now the dot append method, the append method appends an element to the end of the list. So it basically adds a new element to the end of the list. So here is the people list again. And if we try to add a newly appended person seven to the end, you'll see the newly appended person seven added to the back of the list, the end of the list. Just like with strings, we can also check if an element is in the list using the in keyword. And we can use E in the L to check if the element E is in the list called L. And it will give us the Boolean value to represent that. So here is the list of fruits, and it's going to hold the values of apples, 
oranges, and grapes. If we check if giraffe is in this list, it will give us false because giraffe is not inside this list. And apples is going to be in list of fruits because it's right here. So if I run the cell, you'll see false and true printed out. The second data type that we will talk about today is the tuple data type. And it's another data type in Python that can store multiple items as a collection. The difference between a tuple and a list is that tuples cannot be modified. An attempt to do so will raise a type error. And in Python, tuples are surrounded by parentheses. So here's a tuple. You can see we have a parentheses and a closing parentheses here, and the items are separated by commas. So if I try to print this tuple out and also the type, you'll see the tuple printed out firstly and also telling and also the output telling us that the tuple is of class tuple, meaning it's a tuple data type. Just like with lists, we can access the items in a tuple by using indexing. So this is going to give us the item of a tuple at index two, and this is going to give us the item at the back of at the end of the list. So if I print this out, you'll see hey, which is at index two, and nice to meet you, which is at index negative one, printed out. If we try to modify a tuple item though, you'll see a type error generated because a tuple object does not support item assignment. So we can actually we cannot actually modify the items of a tuple. And there are ways how you can go around to change a tuple, but it's good practice to use tuples only when it's constant throughout the program's runtime, meaning it's never changed. If you do want to change a collection, using a list is probably a better idea since the list data type also offers more functionalities than tuples. And just something to end the discussion on tuples with is tuples with one item. And it's something you might come across somewhat frequently when you deal with some packages. And it's how to make a tuple with only one item in it. With lists, simply wrapping that in a square bracket will do. So this is going to be a list. With a tuple though, a comma is needed before the end in parentheses to show that the data is a tuple. So here we see a not a tuple and kind of give, give it away that this is not a tuple. And if I print this out, you'll see this is actually of class bool. So it's a boolean data type. And in Python, if we just put a parentheses around one item, it actually does not do anything. It's just going to kind of group it together. It actually does not do anything at all. If we put a comma after the element and before the closing parentheses though, it's going to tell Python that the data is going to be of type tuple. The last thing that we will talk about in today's lesson is lists and tuples used with for loops. And this is one of the most common way of how lists and tuples are used. So let's take a look at that. Here we have a tuple called numbers that holds a total of six numbers in it. And if we try to print out the items, you'll see it's printed out just like this. So here's a tuple, I mean, here's a for loop and the temporary variable is called num. And we iterate through the number numbers tuple and print out the items in it. Here is a list. So numbers two is going to be a list of five items. And here is the incorrect way of modifying a list. So if we try to iterate through the list and multiply all the numbers by two, you'll see actually the list is entirely unchanged. This is because when we state num multiply equals two, we're simply modifying the temporary variable num and we are actually not modifying the list itself. The correct way to modify a list is to use its index. So for i in range len numbers two, so we're going to assign a temporary variable called i that iterates through the range of the length of numbers two. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are the ind indices of numbers 2. And at each index, we're going to mul multiply the item there by 2 and store it back to the list. So now we can see 
2, 8, 4, 12, and 6 printed out. And this concludes the first lesson in Chapter 4. Today we talked about lists and tuples in Python, and those two are going to be very useful in your programming journey. So we talked about lists and also some of the things we can do with it, as well as tuples and some of its functionalities, and we ended with a discussion on for loop used with lists and tuples. Now that you know all about the list and tuple data types in Python, you can apply them into any project that you want. In the next video of this course, we will be learning about what dictionary is and how we can use that data type in Python. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you then.